Hey everyone, welcome to part 32 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in the previous video, we added trainer characters that will challenge the player for a battle when the player steps in front of them. So in this video, we will do the actual implementation of trainer battles. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making the series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get access to some cool rewards like the complete project files of the series which also contains some advanced features that are not covered here. So let's start the video. So let's look at how to implement trainer battles. So inside our battle system script right now we have a function called start battle that takes the Pokemon party of the player and a wild Pokemon in order to start the battle. Right? So I want to make a similar function called start trainer battle that will start a trainer battle. So let me just copy this function and make a duplicate of this. And I'll call this function start trainer battle. And in this function, instead of taking a wild Pokemon, I'll take a Pokemon party called trainer party. Alright, so we need a private variable to store the trainer party. Let me create that. And here, instead of this line, I'll say this dot trainer party equal to trainer party. I actually misspelled trainer over here, so let me just correct that. So next, in the case of trainer battles, we need few more variables. So first we need a boolean to indicate if this is a trainer battle or not. So I'll create a boolean called is trainer battle. And initially let's set it to false. And inside the start trainer battle function, I'll set it to true. All right. And then we need a reference to the player controller and the trainer controller. So let me create those. So we need this to show the details of the player and the trainer and all. So inside our start trainer battle, let's grab reference to player controller and trainer controller. So we can actually get the player controller from the player party. So I'll say player party dot get component and I'll get the player controller. Okay, and similarly, I'll get the trainer controller from the trainer party. So next, inside our setup battle function, the way we set up things will be different for a wild Pokemon battle and trainer battle. So what I'll do is, I'll use an if condition to check if trainer battle is false. So this means it's a wild Pokemon battle. And otherwise, it's a trainer battle, right? So in the case of a wild Pokemon battle, just like we did before, we have to set up the player unit and the enemy unit, and then set the move names and show a dialog saying wild Pokemon appeared, right? So let me copy that also. Okay, so this line, which is responsible for initializing the party screen. We need that in both trainer and wild Pokemon battle. Okay, so I'll put it outside the if conditions. So now, how should we set up our trainer battles? So for trainer battles, first we need to show the sprite of the player and trainer characters. And only after that, we will send out their first Pokemon in the party. So let's go to Unity and import the sprites for player and trainer character. So inside my art, I'll create another folder called trainers. So I have two sprites for my trainers. So let me import that. So I'm going to select these two sprites and I'll set their pixel per unit to 32. I'll change my filter mode to point no filter. 
and for the compression I'll select none and hit apply alright so now in my battle system canvas first I have to enable my battle system and under my battle system canvas I'll create an image and I'll call this player character okay and let me duplicate this to create my trainer character so let me double click on my battle canvas in order to focus that and first let's set the sprite for the player character image so I'll just drag and drop the sprite here so let me just move the player character image right now we can't see it because the trainer character image is on top of that okay so next I will change its width and height to 200 by 200 that looks okay and, and let me just disable my player and enemy unit game objects so that I can get a better look at my character sprite so let me place my character sprite somewhere over here that looks fine so next let's set the sprite for our trainer character All right it is pretty small so I'll change the width and height to 250 this one is a bit more bigger than, than the player so I'll make it 250 by 250 and let me place it somewhere over here alright so both character sprites are looking fine so let me disable these two initially we don't want to enable this and let me enable back our player and enemy unit alright so back in our battle system script first we need a reference to the image of both characters so let me create variables for that so yeah I have to import unityengine.ui in order to use the image and I'll name this variable player image and next I'll duplicate this and create our trainer image alright so now in our battle system we can assign our player image and trainer image game objects so now in order to set up a trainer battle first we need to show the trainer and player sprites so for that first we have to disable the player and enemy unit since we don't want to show the pokemons at the start of the battle instead we want to show the player and the trainer sprites so let me disable the player unit and the enemy unit okay so i'll use the set act set active function in order to disable it and i'll also do that for the enemy unit and next we need to enable the player and the trainer image okay and let me also enable the trainer image so now at the start of the battle we will show the trainer and the player image so next we actually have to set the sprites for this image the default sprite that we set from unity are just placeholders right for different trainers we need different sprites so let's go to our trainer controller and create a variable for the sprite all right and we also need a variable for the name so that we can show it in the, our dialog box okay and let's create properties to expose these and let me also create name and sprite for our player so I'll copy those variables inside my player controller and let me also copy the properties
So now in our battle system script, I can say player image dot sprite equal to player dot sprite. Okay, and let me also set the sprite for my trainer. Alright, so after showing the trainer and player sprites, I'll show a dialog saying this trainer wants to battle. So I'll say trainer.name wants to battle. Alright, so let's test this in Unity. So first we need to assign the sprites for our player and trainer. So in my player controller, I'll just assign a name and a sprite. And let's also assign it for the trainer. Okay, and let me just disable my battle system. We don't want that enabled by default. And let's test the game. Actually, before testing this, there are some more things that we have to do. So first, we need to add a Pokemon party to our trainer game object. So let me add a Pokemon party. And let's say this trainer has two Pokemons. So for the first one, I'll choose a Pidgey of level 6. And for the next, I'll choose Butterfree of level, let's say, 8. Alright, and next we need to actually call the start trainer battle from somewhere, right? So if you look at the start battle function, it's called from inside the game controller script. And it's called from inside another function called start battle, which is also responsible for handling the states, okay? So what I'll do is, I'll copy this function and create a duplicate of it. And this one, I'll call it start trainer battle. Okay, so here, most of the things are going to be same as the start battle function. The only difference will be, instead of getting a wild Pokemon, we will actually take a trainer as the parameter. Okay, so we can remove this line that gets the wild Pokemon. And here, instead of calling battle system dot start battle, I'll call battle system dot start trainer battle. Okay, and instead of passing the wild Pokemon, we need to pass the trainer party. So let's first get a reference to the trainer party. Okay, we can easily get a reference by using trainer.getComponent. And for the second parameter, I'll pass my trainer party. I misspelled trainer again, so let me fix that. So next, we need to call this function after the trainer challenges the player for a battle, right? So since we need to call this directly, I'll make this a public function and inside our trainer controller once the trainer challenges the player for a battle so right now after showing the dialog we are just printing start trainer battle so instead of that we need to call our start trainer battle function so in order to do that first we need a reference to the game controller script right so I'll use the singleton design pattern here so we can get a reference to the game controller from anywhere we want. So I'll create a static property called instance. And inside our awake function, I'll say instance equal to this. All right, so now back in our trainer controller, we can say game controller dot instance and then we can call 
the start trainer battle function. So for the trainer controller parameter, I'll just pass this class. Okay. So now once the trainer challenges the player for battle, we should actually start the trainer battle, right? So let's try testing this now. So if I walk in front of the trainer, he will challenge me for battle and after showing the dialog if i press z it will actually start a trainer battle right and here we are showing the trainer and the player sprite instead of showing the pokemons but i've noticed some problems here first we don't want the hud to be shown while showing the trainer sprites right these are actually for the pokemons so we need to disable them by default and another problem is a small part of the trainer sprite is actually shown on top of the dialog box right so first let's fix this so let me enable my battle system and under the battle canvas i'll make sure to put my player and trainer characters above the dialog box okay so now the player character won't be on top of the dialog box so let me just disable my battle system now and next we need to make sure that the HUD is not shown while showing the character sprites so in our battle system we don't directly have a reference to the HUD it's actually inside our battle unit script okay so what I'll do is I'll create a public function called clear is going to be the opposite of setup and in this function I'll just disable my HUD game object okay so since we are disabling it we have to make sure that we enable it in the setup function okay so now in our setup battle function at the beginning I'll call player unit dot clear and also enemy unit dot clear so now the HUD won't be shown at the start of the battle so let's test that let me start trainer battle Okay, so you can see that we are only showing the trainer sprites and we are not showing the HUD. And also here you can see that our dialog box is on top of the player and not the other way around. So next, after showing the character sprites, we need to send out the first Pokemon in the player and the trainer party and then start the actual battle. So let's do that next. So inside our setup battle function, after showing the trainer and player sprites, first I'll send out the first Pokemon of the trainer and then I'll send out the first Pokemon of the player. Alright, so in order to send out the trainer Pokemon, first we need to disable the trainer image and then we need to enable the enemy unit. So first let me disable the trainer image. I'll use set active false in order to disable it and then we need to enable the enemy unit so I'll say enemy unit dot game object dot set active true so next we need to get the first Pokemon from the trainer party right so we can get that by using trainer party dot get healthy Pokemon okay so this will turn the first healthy Pokemon inside our trainer party and then we need to say enemy unit dot setup and for the pokemon we have to pass the enemy pokemon okay so these two lines will send out trainers first pokemon and after that i'll just show a dialog saying trainer did send out this pokemon So in the dialog, I'll say trainer send out 
the name of the Pokemon. All right, so next we have to send out players for Pokemon. So for that, first we have to disable the player character image. And then we need to enable the player unit sprite. Okay, and then we need to get the first Pokemon in the player party. And then we have to call player unit dot setup and pass our first Pokemon in order to send that Pokemon out. Right? And finally, I'll just show a dialog saying something like go and the name of the Pokemon. So next, whenever we send a player Pokemon out, we also have to do one more thing. So in the case of wild Pokemon battle, you can see that after sending out the player Pokemon, we are actually calling dialog box dot set move names and passing the moves of the player Pokemon. So this is required to show the player Pokemon's move inside the move selector. So let's also do that for our trainer battle. So now we are done with our setup battle function and in the case of trainer battle first we'll show the trainer and player sprites and then we'll send out the first pokemon of the trainer and then the first pokemon of the player and after that the battle will start all right so next we have to handle the case when a trainer pokemon faints so if you look inside the check for battle over function You can see that whenever a Pokemon faints, if the fainted Pokemon is actually a player's Pokemon, then we'll check if there is any Pokemon left in the party and open the party screen. And otherwise, if it's the enemy Pokemon, then we are simply calling the battle over function. Because until now, if the wild Pokemon faints, there is nothing else that we have to do. We just have to end the battle. But now, since we have trainer battles, we can't simply do this. So what I'll do is inside the else, first I'll check if it's not a trainer battle. And in that case, we'll just return battle over true. Okay, so if it's a wild Pokemon battle, we'll simply call battle over function just like before. And otherwise, if it's a trainer battle, then first we need to check if there is any other healthy Pokemon in the trainer party. So I'll say trainer party dot get healthy Pokemon. And I'll show this in a variable called next Pokemon. Okay, and if next Pokemon is not equal to null, then we have to send out that Pokemon, right? So we'll do that in a moment. But for now, let me just add a comment over here. And otherwise, we can just end the battle by calling battle over. So now, to send out the next Pokemon, I'll create another function. So below my switch Pokemon function, I'll create another function called send next trainer Pokemon. And this will take the next Pokemon as the parameter. So inside this function, first I'll set the state to busy so that nothing else will happen when the Pokemon is being switched. And then I'll say enemy unit dot setup and I'll pass the next Pokemon. So this line will send out the next Pokemon. And after that, I'll just show a dialog saying the trainer did send out this Pokemon. And finally, once we are done with the switching, I'll just set the state back to running turn so that we can continue the battle. Okay. So now inside our check for battle over function, we can call the function that we created now. Okay. And since this is coroutine, I have to put it inside start coroutine.
So we are done with the implementation of trainer battle. Let's go to Unity and test it out. So let me start a trainer battle. All right. So first we are showing the trainer's sprites, and then trainer will send out his first Pokemon, and then we'll send out our first Pokemon. So let's try fighting this Pokemon. And once the Pidgey faints, the trainer should send out his next Pokemon. So let's test that. So yeah, Pidgey fainted. And you can see that the trainer sent out his next Pokemon. So let's try continuing this battle. Okay. So I'll have to switch my Pokemon. Alright, so the second Pokemon also fainted and the trainer doesn't have any Pokemon. So the battle was ended. So awesome. Our implementation of trainer battle is working fine. But there are a few more things that we need to do. So if I walk in front of the trainer again, you can see that he'll challenge me for another battle. But we don't want that, right? Once the trainer loses the battle, he should not challenge us again. So we'll do that in the next video. And I'll stop the video here. If you think these videos are helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. That'll really help me a lot. So I'll see you in the next video.